so my presentation today is on Iowa prairies. Um, first, I have a little introduction. Um, my name is Sarah Golden. I am an applied human services major with a minor in social work. Um, my internship again is through the senior center. Um, most of my free time, I love spending outdoors and with my brand new puppy, and that's his name's Bo. I included <laughs> a photo of us on my screen. Um, and as well, I wanted to include a lot of these photos of the background of prairies I have taken myself. So they're my own photos. Um, so I thought we'd start off with some history. And so um, a prairie is a natural vegetation type in which perennial herbaceous plants predominant, particularly species of grasses. Um, the word prairie comes from the French I don't want to butcher this word, so I'm going to let everybody take that how they would like, and it means um, meadow. Um, the landscape of Iowa has changed like really drastically in the past 160 years. Um, prairies have suffered the most. Um, of the 30 million acres of the prairie that covered Iowa at the time of the European set settlement, less than one tenth of one percent remains. So there's really not a lot of prairies um, left anymore. Um, the Lowe's Hills of Western Iowa contains the largest remaining prairies in Iowa. And I will speak later on about like the remnants of prairies and restoration and all of that. Um, in the past decade, um, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, Prairies have increased as Iowans have restored many prairie areas. Um, so tall grass prairies are the most common in Iowa. Okay, so here's some more history continued. Um, the native prairie is overwhelmingly rare in Iowa. So historically prairies once covered 75 to 80% of Iowa's landscape and that is now very different as you can see in the map. I'll explain that in a second. Um, now then less than 1% of that original prairie remains scattered throughout small crack, oh my gosh, pockets across the state. Um, and then again today, less than one tenth of 1% of Iowa's native prairie remains, um, mostly existing in small untouched parcels. Um, so the map to the top right up here, um, all of the yellow, is um, pretty much prairies in Iowa about 160 years ago. And the green is um, like wood areas and stuff like that. And the map underneath it is, it's not like a current map, it's from I believe 2009, but that even shows right now that um, the yellow portion of the map of Iowa is gone. So that means like literally the majority of Iowa's natural prairies are um, gone now. Okay, so I have some prairie facts. So the major grass of the tall grass prairie are the big, are the, oh my gosh, big blue stem, the little blue stem, and Indian grass and switchgrass. Um, these tall grasses can grow as tall as 10 feet in an average height of six to eight feet. Um, each year, some of the roots die, so large quantities of organic matter are added to the soil and roots die and decompose, making really rich and fertile soil. Um, so prairie soils are rich. They have a good nutrient supply for growing. Um, they create good soil structure in the topsoil, so prairies have really, really good topsoil. Um, so the topsoil is at least 25 centimeters um, thick. And I also um, have a YouTube video. It's a short little five minute video and um, it kind of explains prairies and um, the universe, like Iowa State, what they're doing with prairies and restoring things. So I'm going to click on that so we can watch that. Follow any pickup down the dusty roads of Iowa and you'll see the start of a quiet transformation. Farmers are plowing under valuable corn and soybean crops and reintroducing prairie. So what we're looking at is the native tall grass prairie. It's a mix of grasses and forbs that you would have found as the dominant ground cover in the state of Iowa um, about 200 years ago. 
The original prairie has all but disappeared. It once covered 85% of the state. Now, that's about one-tenth of one percent. Three-quarters of Iowa is now covered by two lucrative crops, corn and soybean. But a project by Iowa State University might just change that. By setting aside about 10% of farmland as prairie strips, researchers have found farmers can stop 80 to 90% of topsoil from running off into lakes, streams, and groundwater. Deep prairie grass holds nutrients like nitrogen and phosphorus in. For farmers, that runoff might as well be money. The best soil is on the top six to eight inches, and any time you lose any of that soil, you lose potential productivity down the road. Two centuries of runoff has taken its toll, wiping away more than half of Iowa's topsoil. For the rest of us, that runoff becomes pollution, poisoning the water, killing fish, and leading to dead zones like this one in the Gulf of Mexico. The new prairie has even changed the sound of Iowa farmland. Wildlife has returned after being driven out as farms replaced animal habitats. That means more beetles, birds, and bees that pollinate the prairie. Bees are important uh, for producing food for us because they actually, they are very important element for uh, breeding, plant breeding, and uh, producing seeds. So bees are helping the plants and plants are helping the bees. What is this? Is this something we can implement on our farm? For now, the program is voluntary and about 30 farms here have installed prairie strips. But more are listening asking a farmer to take a little bit of land, turn it into prairie that used to be the dominant vegetation is, a, in my mind, kind of a gentle, elegant way to see some of those gains. Um, and then you're providing some of the natural heritage for the state of Iowa and bringing that back. If it works here in Iowa, reintroducing prairies could become the standard for the entire U.S. And that could transform farming across the American heartland and, who knows, maybe the world. John Hendren, Al Jazeera, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. So a lot of the prairie plants and flowers that make up most of the prairies in Iowa, um, these are the main ones. So you have the big blue stem, the little blue stem, Indian grass, prairie coneflower, and butterfly milkweed. And so the big blue stem was once the dominant plant of Iowa lands and um, it varies in color from bronze to lead gray and it grows to heights of six to eight feet so a lot of prairies when you're driving like past that's probably like one of the major things you're seeing um the little blue stem dominates most dry prairie areas and um they can grow up to two to five feet tall so very tall um indian grass is well known for its long golden plum like seed and it can grow up to four to 12 inches. Um, the prairie coneflower, I feel like I see a lot of those not even in prairies. Um, I see my aunt grows a lot of them as well. And they're identified from its long droopy yellow petals and it can grow under a variety of conditions. Um, there are some that's also like pinkish purple as well. Um, the butterfly milkweed is a member of the milkweed family. So this flower can grow to a height of more than two feet tall. In the next slide, I have some of these pictures. So the one on the right right here is the coneflower one. So you can see it's not just yellow. You can have um, pink as well. And then we have our long stem and our little stem ones. And this is our milkweed to the left. And um, these are two extra ones that you will um, see in prairies. Um, I'm not sure exactly the names just because some of them have more than one um, titles. So um, I also have on one of my PowerPoint slides a picture of one of them that I saw at a prairie. So it's pretty cool. Um, so some of Iowa's remnants, so some prairies that are um, still in Iowa and are like doing restoration and all that is the Doolittle Prairie State Preserved, and that is located in Story County. And then the Turin Prairie, so that's in Council Bluffs in Sioux City, in the heart of Los Hills, which we um, I spoke upon earlier. And then um, Barneau Prairie, and it's located in Kosuth County. Um, so then locations with these, um, 
prairie plants and flowers I've included in this slide. Um, so there has been the Belgium Grove located at all these addresses are, um, I can send out to in an email. Um, there's a big grove preserve. I've been there as well. And that one has a lot of nice like hiking trails you can go to. Um, Muddy Creek Preserve, um, Pappy Dickens Preserve. And um, I actually included a link on here, but I can probably click on it after the PowerPoint and show you guys all of these um, places that are pretty close by that you could um, go to. Um, I feel like it's a really great opportunity. I know it's kind of getting colder out right now, but once it warms up, um, especially with COVID, it might be something fun to do to get outdoors and everything, especially because a lot of these preserves do have trails for um, people to walk on and maps and routes and everything. So I think that's like a really great idea.